Hello everybody, my name is Isaac, and in this quick tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the scanline render node with the projection mode set to UV to get this projected top-down angle on your footage, which can be used for a variety of things. In order to use this UV project technique on the scanline render, what you're going to need is a piece of background footage and a camera that has uh, been tracked to this footage. I'm not going to go over in detail on how to create a tracked camera. You can figure it out. Track a camera. So let's say our task for this kind of shot might be to clean out some of the snow uh, that's, you know, in this area of the footage here and maybe some of the stuff over here and, you know, maybe even some of the stuff back here all along the edges. Basically, you know, we don't want the snow here. We want just uh, just these bricks. That's a task that might be uh, not too uncommon, uh, a task that you might see uh, in the VFX industry. So this technique kind of requires a couple things. We're going to use this tracked camera to project onto a card uh, in 3D space. And basically, we're going to look at that card's UVs and be able to paint on the UV map. And that's what makes this technique really cool, because it gives you a really neat perspective, and it's really good for painting on patterns. Uh, like these bricks here, or like wood grain, or tiles, or anything that tiles that could be difficult to paint in perspective, but much easier to paint when you're looking kind of top down at it. Uh, so to start, we're going to need to uh, create a card. And this card needs to line up uh, on the area that we're trying to do our cleanup on. So I'm going to try and get this card to line up uh, right about on this uh, wooden, or these uh, stone tiles here. Um, and to do that, let's grab a little point cloud generator first. Plug in a camera and a source. And uh, let's make our keyframe spacing, I don't know, like five or something like that. Add all and track our points. All right, so the point cloud generator has finished uh, calculating the point cloud. And what we can see here, if we look at it, is a really nice representation of, of our shot, we can clearly see uh, the bricks here where we want to uh, do our cleanup and the sidewalk on the side, it's, it's very nice. So what we're gonna do now is create a card and we're going to align this card towards, uh, align it with the, uh, with the bricks or the area that we're trying to clean, uh, do the cleanup on and in this case, it's this bricks area here. So think about this card like your canvas. Whatever is within the bounds, boundaries of this card, is what you're going to be able to paint on. So our perspective is going to kind of be like this. So if any of the stuff uh, that you're trying to clean out falls outside of this card range, it's not going to appear uh, on your canvas. So make sure it's scaled uh, in a way that is useful for you. Let's just let's just go with this for now. Next, we are going to get our project 3D node. And we can hook our camera to our projection here. Let's just kind of keep this somewhat organized. And our footage to our project 3D. And now when we look at that, we can see that we are projecting uh, the footage onto this card. And you can kind of see where this is going already. Again, this is our the card is our canvas, and we're going to get this uh, top-down perspective uh, via the UV map. So next we're going to drop in a scanline render here. Our scanline render needs to be set to UV in this projection mode. And you don't actually have to hook a, a camera up to this because this UV mode here doesn't actually use uh, anything that comes out of the camera. If you're familiar with 3D packages uh, at all, you know the UVs are a zero to one plane. It's basically the, it's a way to get the 3D model to be represented as a 2D flat plane. All the surfaces of the 3D model to be represented on a 2D flat plane. Our card is our card is 2D already, so we're basically just taking a look at this, uh, the top skin, I guess, of the card, and 
placing it flat on our plane uh, like this. So now you could hook a camera in, but it doesn't actually change uh, how this um, uh, how this operates. Uh, so now we have our UV plane here, and so if we slowly cache through this, we can see that uh, we kind of get the perspective in which our, our footage was shot, with the camera being over here and slowly uh, uh, creeping closer across across the flame the frame. So I play a small section of that, you can kind of see that like this. And what this lets us do is it gives us this unique kind of top-down perspective, which makes painting on these patterns uh, a lot easier than it might be otherwise. So before we before we started and get painting here, we need to make sure that we can reverse uh, reverse this operation as well. So whatever we're 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 doing to stabilize out our footage, we need to make sure that we can uh, unstabilize it at the end. And to do that, we're going to take our card again and plug it into our scanline render. And then we can take another scanline render, hook it up to here, hook it up to our card, and to our tracked camera. And this scanline render is just going to be set uh, regularly to render camera. And what we can see is we come out of this. This is basically the piece of our footage uh, that needs to be merged back on top. So when we do all our cleanup, the cleanup is going to be on this little uh, uh, on this card, and then we're going to merge it back over our footage. So as we can see here, what we have coming out is going to be the same as what we have coming in. Great. So now when we go to do our cleanup, we can look at this scanline render here. And now we can start doing some of our paint work. So if I'm looking to remove some of the snow here, I'm going to first find a nice frame. I think this uh, frame zero is good. It gives us the most information. And then with my clone tool, I could set this to all. And I'm going to do this really quickly uh, just for the sake of example. You don't want to uh, watch me sit here and slowly um, go through all this tedious painting, but I'll just do enough to kind of get the point across. And as we see when I start painting here, um, because this is a very tiled texture, when you line up your clone brush to uh, an edge of that tile, it makes this painting much easier than it would be, say, to get it to line up uh, in this perspective mode. So. Uh, just kind of look around here. You know, I'm not going to spend too much time uh, doing this. Just going to go through for the sake of example. On your shot, I'm sure you'll take enough time to do this delicate cleanup and make it look as pretty as can be. But just for the sake of example here, we're just going to kind of squib it. There we go. And maybe some of this too. Oh, that was a little bit too bad. There we go. Some of this, yeah. You know, something like that. And then maybe even over here could do a little bit, you know, kind of up here. Something like that into this area. All right, yay! We have our beautiful, beautiful painted, uh, a beautiful painted uh, frame here. And so I set this to all here. These are going to last throughout the entire, uh, throughout the entire sequence. And that's okay because this is more or less not, uh, not a changing uh, image here. It's it's more or less just a still. You can treat it kind of like a still. And we can do that because our our tracked camera is is very very good. Uh, if you have a shot where your your camera track is not bang on, then you might need to take a little bit more care going through this entire sequence and finding areas of slippage or uh, of weirdness happening. Uh, so now we can see that when we look back at our footage, we can see you can look at all the painting we did, and you can see that that's that's making a huge difference uh, very very quickly. I've gone ahead here and cached out our sequence, and you can see that this method is holding up fairly well. Um, you know, ignoring our 
clony haphazard paintwork here. You can see it sticks very nicely, and it holds up uh, from from the far away parts of the shot all the way up to uh, the close angles. And I find this technique is very useful whenever you're trying to paint on these tileable textures, as what will usually happen is, you know, you're at a perspective like this, and you take out your paint, and you know, you're trying to track on some patch. And well, first of all, the stuff that you paint over here is going to end up fuzzy as the camera gets closer because of the, the, the depth of field on it. And painting um, on a pattern like this at this kind of angle is very difficult for the eye uh, to kind of pick up the, the right perspective and stuff. Uh, this is also really good for painting out like dolly tracks because dolly tracks are almost always just they're, they're just flat on the floor. And this gives you that nice top down perspective uh, to easily paint out. Uh, stuff that is is on the ground more or less. So here I've cached out an example I prepared a little bit earlier with a little bit cleaner uh, paintwork here uh, to discuss some of the downsides of of doing something like this. Well, I guess first the upside is this method is very very fast to do. Uh, painting stabilizing out your your ground and painting as if it was a single frame is a pretty quick way to work uh, and can save you a lot of time. Uh, as opposed to tracking different sections and different patches and lining stuff up with depth of field and and, and su such like that. However, because you're projecting stuff into 3D space and rendering it out the scan line, rendering it out again, you're taking quite a few uh, quite a few filter hits. And oops, yeah, you're, you're taking quite a few filter hits. And I'm not sure if the YouTube compression is going to be able to allow you to see this here, but um, some of these areas appear a little bit jagged or a little bit, uh, yeah, like here. You can see like this is being the original footage here, and this is what comes out of the scan line. Uh, there's definitely some kind of aliasing and, and muckiness that, uh, that can appear out of that. And sometimes that's an issue. Uh, depending on where your where your subject is that you're cleaning out, and, and sometimes it's it's not that big of a deal. But there are a couple things you can do, uh, or at least you could try to kind of minimize this. And the first thing you could do is you could change your filter here. You could try uh, some of these different filters down here. It's not always one that's going to work better than the others. Sometimes I find that anisotropic works a little bit better. Here it looks like it's uh, not not so. Um, you know, you could either try things like Sync 4 or Lanxos or, or something like that. Uh, those are a little bit heavier on the sharpening, um, so it might not be exactly what you want. Yeah, you see we're getting a little bit dark, so you kind of have to play around with it and see uh, which one uh, which one is going to be a good a good fit for uh, for your needs. So yeah, there we go. I found that like Lanxos 6 is looking pretty close. I mean, you could tell there's a little bit of a filter hit, but once you throw grain back on top of this, it's probably not going to be um, as as noticeable. You can kind of get in there. Look at that. That's pretty close. Uh, something else you could try and do is you could try and throw this section, or sandwich, sorry, this section and the section between uh, uh, in log space. So you could do something like a, like a log to lin, set this to... Uh, we want to first go lint to log, and then after this, this one goes log to lint. Uh, you could do something like this, and that sometimes gives you a, a, a slightly smoother result depending on what filtering method you're using in the scanline render. You could also use like the color space node and put it into from linear into some kind of like flat color space space like the Alexa V3 Luxe. And you would do that down here as well. And then you could also repeat that uh, after you do your cleanup. So whatever your cleanup is going to be done in linear, but whatever is not happening in cleanup is going to be in the Alexa uh, or your kind of more flat color space. And we can see if that actually makes a difference on this one. Eh, it helps a little bit. Um, it's kind of up in the air. Sometimes when you use like really heavy sharpening, oops, really heavy uh, sharpening filter modes. This this is useful. Sometimes uh, it doesn't help you out as much as it should. Um, but again, you just kind of have to play around with it, and each shot is going to be a little bit different. Cool. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this little quick tutorial. Let me know 
if you have any questions or comments or feedback uh, about this, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.